You've heard it before, women have two X chromosomes and men have an X and a Y. But what does this mean? And why is this Y chromosome, which holds essentially every sex-specific trait for men, so small? The origin story of the X and Y chromosomes goes something like this. Scientists first discovered the X using a microscope, and they knew it was important, but they didn't know why it was important, so they called it Factor X. After studying it for a while, they realized that there had been another chromosome they had been missing. See, whereas most chromosomes have a partner, the X chromosome didn't really have a partner in all of sexes. It had a partner in females, but it had this really small, mutant, pretty disordered looking Y chromosome in males. And on this Y chromosome, there's actually relatively very few genes. Whereas the X contains many genes, some related to sex and some not, the Y pretty much only contains sex-related genes, and quite few of them. So why is it so small? There's actually a pretty accepted hypothesis as to why the Y got so short, and it relies on a process called recombination. I'll try to explain it with as little jargon as possible. Approximately 300 million years ago, a normal chromosome got its start as the Y chromosome when it mutated a specific region and turned into the SRY gene. This is a gene called the sex determining region and it is where, if turned on, an embryo will suddenly become a male. It's pretty much the all important male gene. But the sudden appearance of the SRY gene, the male coding gene, marks only the beginning of the evolution of the Y chromosome. At this point, it was still a normal chromosome with many other genes on it doing presumably other important things. To understand how it started to shrink, we need to know a little bit about the basic behaviors of chromosomes. Now, humans have 23 unique chromosomes, and every chromosome has what's called a sister chromatid. Hi, uh, editing Val here. In the next section, I continually say sister chromatids when I mean homologous chromosomes. This is the difference between a sister chromosome and a homologous chromosome. Um, important difference, even though a confusing one. That has the exact same genes, but maybe a different version. Say, one pair of the sisters will have the gene for blue eyes, and the other will have it for brown eyes, but they both code for eyes. That's a simplification, of course, but kind of shows what I'm talking about. During replication, these sisters will exchange information with each other, basically swap segments of DNA with each other so that they can increase the diversity of what they look like, and basically make more chromosomes that have a little bit different versions on every duplication. This is a good thing, it adds genetic diversity to our chromosomes and allows for us to mutate and grow and evolve. But this process of recombination is not always perfect. There are many times when the chromosomes will make a mistake and a gene will end up on the other chromosome upside down or with something in the middle of it or another way that it can be completely unreadable. Mistakes made during recombination are not always bad. In fact, it's a mistake that was made during recombination that led to us having bigger brains, or at least that's a prediction. So it's this recombination between two sisters that adds genetic diversity and makes it so that when you have a new line of cells, they'll be slightly different from the last, and with every slightly different line of cells, you can have a potential for a beneficial mutation. Some, of course, will be bad mutations, and we can throw those out, but on the case that we have a good mutation, one that makes your brain bigger, let's say, recombination event was what made it possible. And this takes us back to the Y chromosome. The Y chromosome does not have a sister chromatid. That all-important SRY sex-determining region only exists on one chromosome, and if it were to recombine with another chromosome, we might jumble up that SRY code and pretty much mess up the entire thing of sex differentiation. As a result of the SRY being on only one chromosome, the Y chromosome chooses not to recombine in order to prevent the SRY gene from getting jumbled in any recombination events. 
This led to the chromosome containing the SRY gene to be very lonely. It did not recombine with anyone else, and so whenever a mistake happened, it just stayed there on that one chromosome. Over time, this lack of recombination resulted in a Y chromosome that has a lot of broken genes and no partner to fix them. Broken genes are a waste of space, so if a gene stays broken for long enough, it will actually just disappear from the chromosome. And that's why the Y keeps getting shorter. It breaks genes and there's no one to fix it, and so they just disappear over time. The Y chromosome used to be just like the X chromosome, one of the largest chromosomes and filled with useful genes. Now, because of the SRY preventing recombination, it is full of worthless data and slowly shrinking. Even to this day. The shrinking Y chromosome has been a fun topic of conversation in the scientific community, with some people predicting that it might just shrink to oblivion eventually. I personally don't think this, the SRY gene is way too important, so even though it's shrinking and might just be a very small SRY containing chromosome, it's not going to completely go away. If the SRY gene wasn't so important, it might be a different story. If you saw my previous video on cancer cells, they lost the sex chromosome pretty quickly, starting with the Y chromosome, because there just wasn't an importance for a sex determining region. And in fact, in some older males, many of their cells just ditch the Y chromosome. They stop replicating with the Y chromosome, and that's in a healthy male. This is honestly crazy to me because it means that once the SRY gene is no longer useful, the cells just kick out the Y chromosome without a second thought. So it's the lack of recombination that explains why the Y chromosome is so small and useless. If it weren't for that all-important SRY gene on it, the chromosome would probably disappear pretty quickly. I hope you guys found this video informative. If you're at all interested in this recombination process, I would highly suggest looking it up. It is a fascinating process that happens in chromosomes, and it honestly took me a really long time to understand. Or if you're sick of all of this dense science and genetics terminology, you could look at a more philosophical view of it. There are a few books that discuss what would happen if the Y chromosome were to actually disappear. One written by Brian Vaughan called Why the Last Man is a really cool comic book that explores this concept of the Y chromosome disappearing and being a population of only women. So if you want to take a look at more of the philosophical side of Y chromosome being small, then check that out too. In any case, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. The next video will jump back to neuroscience, so I'm pretty much done talking about sex and sex evolution at the moment. Um, I appreciated all of your guys' comments and the growth it has brought to this channel. I hope you all have an amazing day and I'll see you in the next video.